Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to recap resistors in series and parallel. So let's get started. We'll firstly look at resistors in series, and you might remember this from the National 5 Physics course. So it says here that for resistors connected in series, the total resistance is given by the sum of the resistances of each individual resistor. Or in other words, in order to find the total resistance when we've got more than one resistor, we can just add up the resistances, so it's nice and simple. So RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus dot dot dot, where you would continue this until you get to the number of resistors that you have in your circuit. So if I had four resistors in my circuit, for example, I would do R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, and I would stop at R4 because I've only got four resistors. We can also say that arranging resistors in series gives the greatest possible resistance, i.e. the lowest current. So when we add up more and more resistors in series, the total resistance is just going to get bigger and bigger. And because resistance is the opposition to current flow, remember, this means that we'll get the lowest current. So just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this, let's say I've got three individual resistors here, R1, R2 and R3, and I can use an ohmmeter to measure the resistance of these components separately. So let's say I want to measure the resistance of R1, Let's use the ohmmeter there and let's say that was 100 ohms. Let's say R2 was measured to be 50 ohms and R3 was measured to have a resistance of 200 ohms. Then we've got these individual resistances for these resistors, but if we were to add these all in series, then all we would need to do is add up all of these resistance values and it would look something like this. So if I was to take an ohmmeter and measure across all of those, we would get a total resistance value of 350 ohms. And that just comes from adding the 100, 50 and the 200 ohms. Going back to the notes now, we have resistors in parallel. And you should remember that for resistors connected in parallel, the total resistance is given by an inverse relationship. And by inverse, we mean one over something. So here we have one over the total resistance, one over RT, is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus dot dot dot. And remember, the dot 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 means that you'll stop whenever you get to the total number of resistance values that you have in the question. So if I had, say, three resistors, then I would say 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and then stop because there's no more resistors. It's also the case that arranging resistors in parallel gives the lowest possible resistance, i.e. the greatest current. And so this is the opposite to when we add resistors in series. So in series, the total resistance of the circuit will increase when you add more resistors in series. However, in a parallel circuit, when you add more resistors in parallel with each other, the total resistance goes down. And just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this, let's say I've got an ohmmeter here and I want to measure the resistance values of each of these three resistors, R1, R2 and R3 separately. So if I use my ohmmeter here, I can measure R1 and let's say that's measured to be 10 ohms. Let's say I measure R2 to be 20 ohms and R3 to be 20 ohms as well. Then what we could do here is in order to find the total resistance, we could add them in parallel, but we need to use the inverse relationship. So if we do that, this is the same as taking an ohmmeter and measuring the total resistance across this whole combination in parallel. And if you plugged all the numbers into that equation, 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, you would get out a value of 5 ohms as your total resistance. And notice that this value of 5 ohms is smaller than the 10 ohms and the two 20 ohm resistors. And that is something that you'll always see. The total resistance value for resistors in parallel will always be smaller than any of the individual resistance values. So that's a top tip for you to remember when doing these kind of problems because it's going to help you check whether your final answer is correct or not. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.